then we are coming to the next test the next test here is the use to compare the variances of two different samples so this line also you have to remember in the case of f test the f test is used to compare the variances of two different samples so here f is equals to larger variance always that is the s1 square divided by excuse me divided by the smaller variance that is the s2 square sometimes the s1 square is also explained variance it is called and the s2 square is called as the unexplained variances so here s1 square is actually sum of a square of deviation or variance of the sample one so sigma square is what that is the variance s1 square is also what that is the variance variance of the first sample and similarly s2 square is sometime also called as sum of the square of deviation of the sample two or variance of the sample two so any values two values would be provided in the exam paper or in the question you have to what you have to do you have to put the larger value in the numerator and the smaller value in the denominator always always the larger variance would be first we have to place divided by the smaller variance you will divide you will get your f value that's all you have to do in the case of f test then again the remaining things would be same you will compare it with the table value and you will decide whether your null hypothesis is accepted or rejected so let's see some examples of the f test as well Here the question is saying that the standard deviation of two independent sample is nine and ten. What would be the f ratio? So again, very very simple. That is larger value you have to put. That is ten ten square because this is standard deviation, not the variance. Variance would be always square of the standard deviation. So this ten square divided by nine square. So this is hundred divided by eighty one. This would be somewhere 1.1, 1.2, 1.2. You can take. So 1.2 is your F statistic value. So this is how you can solve questions from the F ratio. This was too easy. Let's see too easy. Now uh, let's see some difficult one as well. Let's see this one. In one way ANOVA, explained variance was found to be eight, and unexplained variance was found to be 3.67. The F ratio is. So again, the calculation is only difficult here. This is already variance. There is no requirement of doing square of that. So this would be eight divided by three point six seven only. So this eight f is equals to here eight divided by three three point six seven. If eight divided by four, so that would be exactly two. So because this is divided by three point six seven, so this here is somewhere between two point two two point three. The approximate value you can see. If options are closer, then actually divide them. And get your answer. Okay. Most probably the options were not very close. Here you can see 2.18 and 2.0. So 2.0 we know that is not answer. So 2.18 will be your answer. In the previous question we have option. No, there was no option. In this question, we have the options. So, one two point one eight is the exact right answer. Now, very one interesting question of this F statistic you can see here. This one is a little bit tricky, very little bit. What do you have to do here? I am explaining. So, next time if you face such question in the examination, easily you can answer. So, question is saying that consider two normal populations with variances of ten and twenty, respectively. If two independent random samples drawn from the two populations are of sizes 30 and 24, and their variances 10 and 15 respectively, the value of statistic F2923 is. So here, this 29 and 23, these are the level of significance you can say. So here, this is just one below then this particular sizes of the population, this 30. And this 24. 30 minus 1 is the 29. 24 minus 1 is the 23. This is called as degree of freedom. So degree of freedom is always n minus 1. Whatever sample size you have, that is divided by minus 1. You will get your degree of freedom here. This degree of freedom is here 29 and 23. 
So now what you have to do or how you can solve this particular question, you have to calculate two F ratio here for the two different population, F1 and F2. So here first population you can see here having the variances of 10 and 20. So this would be 20 divided by 10. So this is two. Then F2 similarly, you have to calculate the variances of the second population. So variances, because variances are already square of the standard deviation, no requirement of the squaring again. So this would be 15 divided by 10, this would be 1.5. So firstly, you have to calculate F1 and F2 separately for both the population. Then combinedly, you have to calculate the F statistic value. Combined calculation would be, again, the larger value divided by the smaller value. Always you have to follow this rule, larger value divided by the smaller value. So two divided by 1.5, two divided by 1.5 would be 1.33. So here you can see A is the right answer. So if suppose two different populations are provided to you, what you have to do, you have to calculate separately F1 and F2 first, then again, divide the larger value with the smaller value, you will get the exact F value. So I hope this is clear to you. If this is clear to you, let's move ahead. The next topic that we have to discuss here is the correlation. So what is the correlation? So correlation, as I have already told you, this can be in the range of minus one to plus one, the R value, correlation coefficient value. In the positive value, we would say the variables are positively correlated. If there is negative value, we would say that the variables are negatively correlated. So what it is providing, what information it is providing, correlation. So the correlation is used to denote the relationship or association between the two quantitative variables. Suppose we have weight and height. So with the increasing, suppose this is the weight X and similarly we have Y, Y is the weight. So if we can assume that with the increasing height, the weight of the people will also increase. With a decreasing height, the weight of the people will always decrease. So that is what? That is association or relationship between the weight and height of the peoples. So that particular association of the any variable, here I have taken example, take an example of the uh, weight and height. You can take any other example as well, any other example, and you can calculate the correlation, association, or relationship between these two variables. And that is done with the help of calculation of correlation coefficient. This correlation coefficient that you have already seen in the t-test, that is r. So this r value will tell you the degree of association is how much. So this coefficient, correlation coefficient, the degree of association is measured by a correlation coefficient. This is denoted by the r. This is given by the Carl Pearson. So that's why it is also called as Carl Pearson correlation coefficient. Sometimes you can also find that it is sometimes called as the Pearson's correlation coefficient or Carl Pearson's you know, correlation coefficient. And the range of this I have already told you starting from minus one to the plus one. Minus one will show you the perfect negative correlation. Zero will show you the no correlation between the variables. And plus one will tell you the perfect positive correlation between the variables. Now, here very long formula you can see in your screen. The very first one is the calculation of the R, X, Y. It means the correlation between the X and Y. And this R is the correlation coefficient of that. That is equals to summation X, I minus X bar, Y, I minus Y bar, under root divided by, divided by under root, summation of the X, I minus X bar whole square, and summation of the Y, I minus Y bar whole square. Then similarly, we have R is equals to n in bracket summation x y multiplied by summation x summation y under root of e in the denominator and summation x square minus summation x whole square then in the bracket n summation y square and minus summation y square so this two formula you have to remember suppose in the examination if question is asked from the correlation how much is the correlation coefficient between these two variables then you have to use this particular formula 
Now, how to use that particular formula? Let's see that. Let's see. Let's see this example, this particular example. Here it is only asking about the positively or negative correlation. But suppose, for example, this is asking about the R correlation coefficient, then how you can calculate it? So for that, the formula you can see there is R is equals to summation of X minus X bar, Y minus Y bar, and this is divided by under root summation of x minus x bar whole square multiplied by summation of y minus y bar whole square. So here you can see, see what the things are required. So x and y are your two variables here. x you can see here are this 5.37, 5.11. Similarly, we have 6.42 and so on, so on, so on, up to the 2.6. Similarly, we have y variables that is 5.88. Then we have 6.35. Then we have 8.11 and so on, so on, so on, up to the point of 3.5, right? Now, how to calculate these values? Firstly, what you will do, you will calculate separately the X bar and the Y bar. So X bar is the mean of all these values y bar is the mean of all these values these two things are required in the formula that you can see so that you have to calculate separately then what is required in this particular formula you have to calculate this first term that is x minus x bar this will be required x minus x bar square would be required so suppose five value you are getting for example five mean value you are getting in the case of x bar so 5.37 minus 5, this would be 0 0.37. 5.11 minus 5, this would be 0 0.11. 6.42 minus 5. So some positive values you will get, some negative values you will get, depending on larger or smaller value. 6.42 minus 5, this would be 1.42. For the 2.6, the very last value, 2.6 minus 5, this will, you will get minus 2.4 value. So some positive, negative values you will get here. Then you have to do a square of all these 0 0.37 square 0 0.37 multiplied by 0 0.37. This value would be even smaller than similar to this 1.42 square value. This would be going to a little bit larger. And similarly, all the values we have to calculate. And similarly, you have to calculate y minus y bar and y minus y bar whole square. So y mean value you will get. You will divide, um, subtract all these values y minus y bar column. Then in this particular column, so these columns one by one you have to make for the calculation of this. Once you get the y minus y bar square, then what you have to do? You have to add these all values, x minus x bar square summation in the last of that. And similarly, x minus x bar summation of this also you will calculate at the last. Then summation of this, summation of this. Then what you have to put? You have to put these summation values only in the formula. X minus X bar summation, you will get from this place. Y minus Y bar, you will get from this place. This divided by under root of this value you will get here. Y minus X bar minus X, this value you will get here. X minus X bar whole square. So this you will put here. And this is multiplied by this Y minus Y bar last value here. And you will solve this value. Then you will get your R value. This is how you can solve using the first formula. So I hope that is clear to you using this particular formula. So I hope this is clear to you. If you can use this formula, so you can use that as well. Here the terms would be changed. Here you will write down X in one column, Y in another column. In the next column, you have to multiply both X, Y because you can see X, Y is required. And summation of this you will need here at the last. Summation of X is also required. Summation of Y is also required so that you can already do in the first two columns. 
then x square value you have to calculate and summation of that y square value you need and summation of that that's all you will need here and number of the observations you will already have that is multiplied by this value in this place then summation x summation y you have already calculated these two values in this place under root n value the n value would be same multiplied by summation x square so this is summation x square so this last value you have to put here minus summation x whole square so this is square of this value the first value this is summation x summation x whole square so this value is square then and summation y square summation y square here we have there is a difference between summation y square and summation y whole square summation y square is this value this one while summation y square would be square of this value summation y and then bracket and then square so here this square is under this summation here this square is free from the summation you should know the difference between them and similarly you will get the r value so both the formulas you can use it is up to you by using both the formula always always you will get the same answer of the r so that is the beauty of these two formulas you can use them and easily you will get answer from this particular formula and your answer where how to check your answer is correct or not so uh, the very key thing that you can do check your r value is in the range of minus 1 or plus 1 so if your r value is in the range of minus 1 to plus 1 so maybe maybe your answer is correct but suppose if it is below the minus 1 range or above the plus 1 range so it is going to be definitely wrong because r value is not possible to have below or above this minus 1 plus 1 range so that is one thing now this can take huge amount of time in the examination although you will get your answer so we will see what you can see what you can use by your common sense or by your means of analytics so without using this formula how you can assume a value of r so that we will see right now 